Good afternoon guys, Dark Purple Shadow here and today I'm going to be talking about pre-built PCs and why you should stay away from them unless you're one specific type of person. Now let me tell you a bit of story time. If you're on a budget, you probably know a time when you were on an even worse budget. A time when you were younger, a time when you didn't understand about computers and I've had my time back in the late 2000s, I'm talking 2008, 2009. I really wanted a, a brand new computer, a gaming computer. I think this was around 2010 time, actually, if I'm honest with you. So at the time, RuneScape HD had come out a couple of years prior, uh, 2008. And I realized my old computers from the early 2000s weren't up to spec and could run it, but it was poor. And a lot of games just wouldn't run on old hardware at that point. And in the 2000s, things changed very quickly. So you went from 256 MB of RAM in 2001 to probably you're looking at pushing four gigabytes by the early 2010s. So my dad offered to buy me a gaming computer. Now my dad wasn't a wealthy man, which is fine, not a problem. And I wasn't a rude child. I really didn't want him to spend more money than he needed to. And I knew we had a budget, so I made sure to do my research. And this is something I always do. I always do my research. And even then, I did as much research as I knew how to at that age. Because information on the internet wasn't as good as it is right now. There weren't people on YouTube telling you what to avoid, what to get. You didn't have people like Linus. Linus was pretty much starting out back then. Uh, so he wasn't really reaching out to places like the UK. So anyway, let me tell you this story. So really and truly, I took my dad to a place called PC World or Curry's or whatever, and I showed him a computer that looked good. This computer looked the part. I put a picture of it on screen. It was called the Advent Centurion. Even the name sounded legitimate. And it had bad boy specs in my head at the time. I'll tell you what the specs are and you can laugh at me. Four gigabytes of RAM, if I remember correctly an AMD Phenom X2 Black Edition. I had no idea what this meant. I thought it must be good. I also had um, a beautiful amount of storage. I think 500 gigabytes at the time or 640, something like that, a random amount of storage. It was a hard drive, obviously. SSDs were a thing, but not really for poor people. It also had uh, something nice, uh, I think in terms of a graphics card. No, it's terrible, actually. It had a ATI HD 4350, which was a graphics card in the most loosest terms of the word. It basically was a display output for a HD PC. At the time, HD video was a big deal. So that graphic card, you could probably play Blu-rays on it. It did. It was able to run a few games here and there. I'm talking like lowest settings, the game boots. You can play it, but you weren't, you might as well go back to your PS2 because it looks better on that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that was the situation we were in. So because of mistakes like this, I'm very cautious about the money I spend and the advice I give to people. Now, when it comes to pre-built PCs, you will be getting proprietary parts unless you go with the smaller builders. What does proprietary mean? These are parts that cannot be switched out, switched back in, changed. You know, you're not getting stuff that really works with other things. So you probably can't change your graphics card. Maybe you can't change your RAM. You can't change your bits and bobs of your motherboard. Your case is a bit wonky. It's hard to work in. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with that. You want to stay away from the big names. And then even with the smaller builders, they're baking in their own margins. And because they're baking in their own margins, you're going to be paying about 10, 15, 20% more than you should for the parts because they're baking in the time it takes them to build the PC. And then as another addition to all of this, even if the price looks good, even if on paper it looks like your CPU and your GPU, you couldn't build a PC that cheap. Remember, there's about 15, 20 different bits and bobs inside your computer. They might not put in case fans. And I'm not saying this is the case around across the board, but a lot of times they cheap out on certain bits and bobs, such as the power supply, maybe even the cooler. They might not put in a proper cooler that is adequate for your high end item. You might not have a good amount of storage. And if you do have storage, it might be the most bottom of the barrel storage known to man. I'm talking a brand you haven't heard of, a brand you can't pronounce, a brand they got from Timu. And then you have stuff like single sticks of RAM. Now, a lot of these are worst case scenarios, but it does happen. You might have a combination of, of the above, or you might have one or two things from this list. Another point I'll be very honest with most people is your time is not worth that much. 
and you shouldn't be paying these premiums if you can build it yourself and most of you can unless you're making five hundred thousand dollars pounds whatever a year and you're some sort of ceo or cfo in like a fortune 500 company humble yourself and build your own pc get the bits and bobs fix the pc yourself spend about half an hour on youtube learning how to do it and be brave and just build it and make sure you stay away from the, the top mistakes. And maybe I'll put a video about that sometime, but stay away from the top mistakes. Just build your PC. And it might be a bit scary, but afterwards you'll thank yourself for it. And the biggest benefit of doing that is it allows you to upgrade everything piecemeal. Now my computer that I built in 2016, since 2016, I've upgraded so many things in it, it's ridiculous. Initially, I flipped the graphics card during the Ethereum boom for a new graphics card and I put that in big upgrade. I also changed the, the CPU cooler because that literally just fell out of the motherboard socket at one point. It was the basic Intel coolers and it started hanging. I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but it happened. At one point, I moved into a building where there was no real option for me to put Ethernet in it. So I put in a Wi-Fi card. That did a great job. The Wi-Fi was actually really good there. It did a job. Uh, I think I added in I added an NVMe SSD when I was stopped being so broke because when I first built the PC NVMe's were very expensive and I was broke then when I finally had money for it I put a pretty nice one in actually a, a SSD 980 uh, Samsung one and that probably was the biggest upgrade even probably even on par with the graphics card it was a huge upgrade but anyway back to the point the reason why these pre-builds are terrible simple as that first computer that i'm mentioning the the centurion whatever my mate laughed at me and he said bro you shouldn't buy pre-builds they use crappy parts and i was thinking bro i got a amd processor and an ati graphics card what more do i want fast forward two and a half years which is not a long time for having a computer that computer, I kid you not, blew up. Like the CPU smoked, died, never booted again. I don't know what happened. Maybe it overheated, whatever. I don't even think the computer was doing anything at the time. It literally just packed up and said goodbye. Now, obviously I'm not saying that will happen in modern processors, etc., but it could happen and stuff like that does happen when parts aren't well balanced and well configured. And really and truly, the final point I'm gonna make is there is a time and place for pre-builds and that is for people who genuinely do not have the time in the day to build a computer and they have a budget like no other. I'm talking Saudi oil baron kind of stuff. They just point to what they want on a website, click, 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 buy that stuff, boom, done. Those are the people who should be getting PCs pre-built because they can afford it and their time is worth a lot and they just don't care. For, for plebs like, like normal civilian people, humble yourself, build your PC, learn how to upgrade it, learn how to work on it, stay away from pre-builds that try and scam you because saving 300 pounds today might cost you 500 pounds in a year's time. Do you know what I mean? So stay wise, stay sane, subscribe, tell me about your stories, about dumb things you did, about PCs you regret buying and about even if it's consoles you regret buying, and graphics cards you absolutely had to deal with as a younger person. Subscribe, Dark Purple Shadow, safe.